Hello friends, welcome to EPG Paatshala. I am Chitra from SNDT Women's University. We will be studying paper 3, Gender Studies and unit within it, Women in Parliamentary Democracy. What are the objectives of this paper to understand the nature and factors influencing women political participation? and also to analyze the role of women in the electoral politics and women in power. To critically examine the participation of women in parliamentary democracy, its contribution towards empowerment of women. With the introduction of democracy, women demanded equal rights and women struggled for suffrage. The Constitution of India has promised legal equality to women. The fundamental right of equality, Article 14 to 18, equal right to vote, has brought women at par with men in de jure sense. The de facto situation is women do cast their votes, participate in agitations, movements, but they still lag behind in position of power and decision making. India ranked 141 among 193 countries as per the report of Inter-Parliamentary Union 2016. Women had been president, prime minister, leaders of major parties, heads of regional governments in India. Sarojini Naidu, Vijaya Lakshmi Pandit, Sicheta Kriplani, Indira Gandhi, Pratibha Patil, Maya Bhatti, Jai Lalita, Mamata Banerjee, Uma Bharati, Sushma Swaraj are well known women politicians. Yet, overall participation of women is dismal. Women who form almost 50% of the population are not even 10% in the parliament. How they have voted as voter, what factors have motivated them, how women representatives have performed, do women get sufficient representation? Do their interests are debated and taken care of? How women in power have performed? Why even today, visibility of women still cannot ensure more representation of them? Have they been different than their male counterparts? How far political participation has empowered women? These are some of the issues that have been discussed in this unit. We'll begin with the very brief history of political participation of women in pre-independence period. These are some of the issues that have been discussed in this unit. And subunits of this unit will be brief history of political participation of women in pre-independence period, reasons for low political participation of women, Women's participation in democratic process, which will include voting behavior, political parties, women and party manifestos, women wings of political parties, women candidates. Next would be women in decision making process. Here we'll talk about women legislators at the union and the state level, percentage of women in central and state legislatures, women in cabinet. Now let us begin with the very brief history of political participation of women in pre-independence period. As we are aware, Srimati Sarojini Naidu led the deputation in 1917 to Montague and Lord Chelmsford demanding women's suffrage. Madras was the first province in 1921 to enfranchise women. Later, in 1929, all provinces enfranchised women, but limiting it by the property and education conditions. The demand for universal adult suffrage was made by the Fundamental Rights Resolution of the Congress in 1931. In 1939, the Subcommittee on Women's Role in Planned Economy was appointed. In 1937 elections, women participated with great enthusiasm. Eight women were elected from the general constituencies and 42 won from the reserved one. 
15 women were members of the Constituent Assembly of India, which had drafted our Indian constitution. Neera Desai has remarked, and I quote, the saga of women's enfranchisement is the story of their participation in nationalist politics and in electoral politics, while putting forth their demand for gender equality. But the mass participation of women in the political field during the freedom struggle seemed to decline after the independence. We can discuss factors responsible for low women participation by dividing them into three broad categories. They are political factors, socio-economic factors and psychological factors. Let us discuss political factors. As we are aware, prevailing masculine model of political life, elected governmental bodies, lack of party support, lack of financial support to women candidate, lack of institutional and political network, absence of well-developed political life, political dynamics, increasing use of money, lack of education and training for women leaders, and increasing use of muscle power, communalization of politics and criminalization of politics resulting into low women participation in political field. Women are considered less politically efficacious by political parties. Women have to contest independently at times as they have been denied tickets by the political parties. Women presence is more symbolic in a party rather than real power sharing within a party. Let us move to socio-economic factors. Prevalence of poverty, unemployment in women, lack of adequate financial resources owned by women, family, childcare responsibilities leading to role conflict as one of the major factors being in hurdle in women's participation. The domestic task and professional obligation is in the fight. Lack of family support, threat of character assassination, and use of violence against women, prevalence of illiteracy, and limited access to education, choices of professions, prevailing social inequalities like class, caste, and rural urban space have been resulting into low political participation by women. There are certain psychological factors as well. For example, patriarchal system favoring sexually segregated roles where private public dichotomy has resulted in women being marginalized in all spheres of activities. Primary role of women as mothers, housewives have been highlighted. They have been socialized in that way. They have been socialized to believe that politics is a male domain lack of confidence in women and their consideration politics being dirty and not meant for them has resulted in low political participation. So in general, there is an apathy towards politics. On note of these factors, those who have shaped the reality, one needs to analyze women's participation in democratic process in India. Political participation in parliamentary democracy includes a range of activities in its folds. It includes voting, campaigning, attending public meetings, active membership of political party, contesting elections, holding party office or any public office, agitations, movements, morchas, strikes, sit-ins are also included in the fold of political participation under parliamentary democracy. But they have not been covered in this unit as it has been taken care in the separate chapter on women's movement. In this current chapter, we will be dealing with the former types of participation. Let us begin with the voting. Compared to other form of participation, voting is considered simple form of participation and women has exercised it 
with increasing numbers. It has been seen that women vote under guidance or threat of their male family members, let it be father, husband, brother or son. They don't have their own interest. When we talked about women voters, their interests are merged in that of their fathers or in that of their husbands. Turnout of women voters in the general election in India, you can see in the table, you will realize with the coming years, women have come out and have voted in numbers. But compared to their demographic numbers, they are less. Women participation as voters has been significant expansion since the late 1990s, reaching at all time high in the 2014 elections. During the last decade, difference between turnout of men and women, which was double digits in the 1960s, dropped to a single digit, which is quite evident from the above mentioned table. Yogendra Yadav has noted that the 1990s is marked with the government instability, rise of BJP, rise of coalition politics, and economic reforms and liberalization, which also witnessed second democratic upsurge. On the electoral front, this upsurge characterizes an increased political participation by socio-economically depressed classes. It included women as well. NGOs active on women issues, women empowerment policies endorsed by state, reservation for women at local bodies, have together brought a new phase of women's politics in India. The study of voting behavior conducted by CSDS had shown that the opinions of men and women from the same social group are more identical than those of women from different groups. Indian women do not always vote as women as gendered beings. Their votes are swayed by regional level politics. The question must be raised here as how can efforts be made to politically mobilize women? Without such mobilization, how can women be decisive factor in mainstream electoral politics? None of the major political parties encouraged more participation of women in electoral politics or have tried to develop women's political constituency in a serious manner. Now let's move to the second important point that is the role of political parties. Political parties are considered important in the parliamentary democracy. One can see that structuring of political parties remain main obstacle in women's political recruitment. Political parties consider women, women candidates as less capable of winning seats than their male counterparts. The number of women within political parties, policy making committees continues to be very low, though some women have led and are leading national as well as regional parties. Progressive parties like Communist Party of India, Communist Party of India Marxist don't even have women representation in their Politburo's National Council till late 1990s. Some of them have worked as spokesperson of the party, for example, Sushma Swaraj, Brinda Karat. Even though discussion on women reservation bills started from 1996, the proportion of women candidates nominated by party in all major parties remained at around 10%. Nirai Desai has noted that the realization of the futility to depend on male dominated parties to take women's issues seriously. In 1994, feminists mooted the idea of starting a women's party. Such experiments have been undertaken in Scandinavian countries and in Germany. One of such attempts has been made in India in 1998 as All India Bharatiya Mahila Dal was formed in Uttar Pradesh. We have seen the table which is 
talking about the last three general elections where the women candidates are very low and they have not even more than 50 in their numbers. Now let's move to women and how women issues have been considered in the party manifestos. As political parties have never thought of building women constituency seriously, they have addressed women issues with tokenism. The study of election manifesto shows that none had done any concrete thinking to spell out a definite stand on women's issues and that none had considered the potential of the multiple roles of women. The Janta Party in 1977 election had recognized role of women as breadwinners and had referred issues of women employment. But manifestos have mentioned gender discrimination, granting equal status to women, serving 30% of jobs for women and enabling them to fully participate in the development process besides putting emphasis on issues like women's education, education, health and their right to property. In fact, after the 1980s, nationwide anti-rape movement, cases of violence against women were raised by women's movement. They became instruments for political parties to score points in electoral battles as well as in local power struggles. Even in post-1996 elections, many political parties promised 33% reservation for women, but they failed to support it on the floor. Let us discuss women wings of political parties. Within political parties, women's issues are categorized as social and not as political issues. They are dealt with women wing. Some of the women wings of political parties are Congress Women Front, Janasangh Mahila Sabha, Women Wing of Bharatiya Janata Party, Samajwadi Mahila Sabha, Shiv Sena Women Front. Although all political parties have its own women's wing, women hardly have a say in the candidate selection committees which are by and large dominated by men. Women representatives, seats allocated to women in recent general elections which has been given in a table format, it reflects that tickets given to women candidates by party, the candidate selection committees which are by and large dominated by men, women representatives or women candidates. Seats allocated to women in recent general elections has been given in the table format. Table given below shows that tickets given to women candidates by party don't represent their demographic numbers. We have seen political parties are reluctant to give tickets to women candidates. But when there is tough fight amongst candidates in particular constituency, where chances of winning are very less, many times political parties have given tickets to women from such constituencies or when there is a death or accident of a veteran politician of the party to encash the emotional sympathy party has given tickets to wife, daughter, mother or sister of that leader. Let's take an example Sunil Dutt replaced by Priya Dutt, Rajiv Gandhi, Sonia Gandhi when, due to charges, Lalu Prasad Yadav has to vacate his chief minister seat, his wife, Rabri Devi Yadav, was selected as new candidate for the position. Thus, an attempt has been made to keep the power within family and kins. Now, let's move to the next part where we are discussing about the women in the decision-making processes. Let us start with the women parliamentarians. 
the membership of the women in the parliament has ranged between 6 to 8 percent. The table which has been provided here where we can have the comparative look of women's presentation in Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha will realize the 4.4 percent women members of the lower house that is Lok Sabha in 1952 has increased significantly to 11.2 in the 2014 election. This remains below the world average. According to the table, we will see that women representation in Lok Sabha statistics indicates the number of female participation in year 1952 below at 4.4% whereas in 2004 into 8.1%. The lowest participation rate of women in Lok Sabha was in the year 1977. That is only 3.49%. The highest participation rate of women in Lok Sabha was in year 2014. Now let us see what is the situation at the state level. What is the condition or what is the number strength we will find at the state legislature's level. The table talking about percentage of women MLAs, we have chosen selective states over here and we'll realize that even at the state level, numbers are very low. Even picture at state level shows lower women participation in the state legislature. Several studies on the nature and role of women MLAs or MPs have shown they are sincere about attendance, committed towards party agenda. They belong to middle age upper caste group and many of them have background of political families. But since 1990s onwards, after second upsurge, democratic upsurge, Women MLAs and MPs from lower caste, OBC caste groups with higher education qualifications, younger at age are increasing in numbers. These women MLAs and MPs have often used parliamentary devices like questionnaire, calling attention motion, zero hour, participation in budget discussions, discussions on the proposed bills. Complicated parliamentary measures which required in-depth study, experience like budget discussions, presentations or piloting bills have rarely been done by women. Women MLAs and MPs have raised questions related with their day-to-day -day issues, issues related with the concerns of women, child and family. Study by National Institute of Advanced Studies in 2002 and 3 has noted while well, elected women representatives addressed issues of long-term benefits such as education, health, violence against women and basic amenities that affect the community. Whereas men concentrated on issues that needed immediate attention like roads, community and com commercial centers, tanks, bridges, etc. Few women MLAs and MPs have also discussed and raised issues of national importance, issues related with industry, trade, labor, home affairs. We can see 1957 onwards, equal remuneration, military legal matters, financial matters, issues with industry been taken up by women MPs. Some of the active women MPs were Rajkumari Amrutkar, Rukmini Devi Arundel, Sushila Nayar, Rinal Gore, Najma Hebdullah. Some women have also piloted bills in the house. In the first parliament, bills related with issues such as dowry, immoral traffic of women, divorce, food and health have been piloted. Women MPs also represented on several joint committees of parliament or the select committees of Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. During the period of 1950 to 1989, a study done by Dr. Chopra says 
women represented on about 126 such committees out of them 82 were joint committees it has been observed that most of these women belong to upper strata of the society and were well educated and had political background then where is the common women and where are the interest of common women Neera Desai has expressed concern over the problem of women's movement how to ensure the accountability of women elected representatives very few women representatives have close link with women's movement and having interest in women's issues shahabano case increasing communalization and less attention in development process have forced women's movement to reconsider strategies to take electoral politics seriously entering the power positions might give visibility but will it help in achieving the goals of equality and justice so far the status of women is concerned the rule of a woman in india didn't bring out any change in the condition of the big mass of the women in the country what does women in power have done what is the status of women in cabinet from 1952 to 1988 only three women had an opportunity to serve the nation as a cabinet ministers women have been given charge as minister of state or a parliamentary secretary at present there are total six cabinet ministers out of 23 increasing the representation of women in the union cabinet is impressive compared to 5% in 1947 to 25% in 2014 Madhukishwar has argued that the absence of critical mass female representatives also reduces their bargaining and negotiating power during the allotment of key cabinet berths Indian women are mostly allotted ministries during the cabinet formation which are termed as feminine portfolios such as women and children information culture and social welfare they are perceived relatively less important with fewer resources and having reach amongst the citizens a parmin rai has highlighted impact of this relegating women to the fringes in the power sharing at the top level adversely affecting overall participation of women madhukishwar shows that the leading Indian female politicians such as Indira Gandhi, Mayavati have actually shown aversion to sharing the limelight with other women politicians. Baseline report by National Institute of Advanced Studies conducted in 1998 has noted at times being an insignificant number may put women in vulnerable positions and that is resulting into alliances with caste region religion rather than common gendered interests thus one can see indian women as people's representative in public life often become co-opted into male center structures of development agenda although the category of women is treated here as a uniform category, it is widely known that the gender situation in India is more complex. An understanding of women's politics must recognize multi-layered nature of gender situation in Indian society. What should be the way out? How can we increase the women's political participation? There are a number of suggestions which have come up. Can reservation be the solution? We will be debating about it, the usefulness and impact of reservation at local bodies in India brought in by 73rd and 74th amendment and can we extend it to the states and national parliaments. We will be debating about the debates on this reservation issues in India in the next chapter. But in this unit we will conclude saying that women issues in India are not single-layered issues. 
there are multi-layered issues. Can reservation be the solution? We'll be debating about it with reference to reservation in local cell bodies and the debate moving around women reservation bill at the state legislatures and parliament in India in the next chapter. Thank you.